David Hogan Belton, November 24th, 2019. So, praise God. Let's welcome Brother David Hogan. Amen. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Thank y'all for y'all's time, everybody. <clears throat> I speak like you, so you should be able to understand my language. Mm -mm. I was born uh, straight down Interstate 20 uh, over in Louisiana, and uh, I'm an eighth generation preacher, so I'm not going to be easy to trick. <clears throat> You're used to dominating preachers with your money, with sickness, with unbelief, with politics, votes. But the problem with me is I'd really appreciate a day off Because I don't know you anything but the truth. Amen. And I have been very fortunate uh, in the last 42 years to stay alive. I work in 16 war zones now. We work in all the continents now. Started out over there in the swamp, Louisiana, uh, in the Mississippi Delta in a little Southern Baptist church in a cotton field. Oldest church in our parish, y'all call them counties. When I was there, it was a 140-year-old church. Had six people when I went. First service, I preached. I lost four. <laughs> so that's encouraging. <laughs> but now I'm very blessed uh, uh, we can talk on anything you want to. I just won't do politics. I just won't. I won't do theology with you. I don't do doctrine with you. I won't. So that leaves everything out that you're used to talking about. <laughs> but I will do healing and deliverance. I will talk to you about what Jesus said for us to do. As you go, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, Raise the dead and cast out demons because freely you have received, give it away. So that's what I will talk to you about. I'm a very fortunate human being. My wife, I was just doing a thing with her so she could see y'all, make sure she understood I, I really am in church. <laughs> we... Uh, we're very fortunate. We've got a great marriage. I've been married to her. This is our 49th year. That's a long time. Same lady. I've got four kids. They all work mission field with me. I've got nine grandchildren. Most of them are down there. And uh, this is my grandson, Corbin. Stand up and say hello. Yeah. They just had their first baby. So I made it to be a great grandpa. That's a, uh, and I'm healed. I, uh, it's gonna really make some of you mad at me because I don't believe like you probably on anything. Very little. Uh, I believe you breathe right here and do other things other places, but that's about it because I'm healthy. Now, um, I'm 68, and I'm healthy. I need you to want this, because many of you in here are paying your local doctor's Ferrari bills and Jaguar bills and the $3 million home house notes, and you can't even hardly put food on your plate. 
Well, I don't know why you want to pay their bills. I suggest you get yourself healed and pay your own. That's what I suggest. Because it's doable. My wife and I love each other now. Really. <laughs> I, mean, I got witnesses. My son, this is my youngest son, Luis. Stand up and say hello to him. This is Luis. Yeah. Luis is a Guatemalteco, a Guatemalan fella. He was born there, and uh, it, uh, my wife and I adopted him when he was little. We was down there working, and uh, Jesus let him be my son. That's a good thing. This is Isaac Armstrong here. He's, he's from Alabama. Please don't stone him, please. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's a good fella. He uh, graduated Tuscaloosa, uh, Crimson Tide Bunch. And they've been down there with us like 16 years, he and his wife, three kids, and things are going well for him. He's going to say something in just a minute. Some test, I don't know what he's going to do, testify or preach, I don't care. It's all the same, all going to end up in the same spot. It will. I, listen, I do this every day. I'm not bored, but I'm close. I am. I can do this. I'm telling you, we can get up here and talk football and I can still get the dead raised. I, it, you believe different. You think you got to have some handwriting on the wall. You got to have some angel come with some flaming sword. Dude, that happened once. Once. Read your Bible. It, those things happened once. But Jesus said, you'll do greater than I've done. And his testimony is, if there was a book to be written in his day, it wouldn't have contained what he did. So that lets us free to be involved. You understand or not? That's what your Bible says. That's not what your theology says, nor your circumstances, nor your surroundings. But your God said you can do it. So I suggest you believe him. Now, I'm coming to you from everywhere. I've been in the planet around the world twice this year and, and we'll be going some more before it's over. All the continents, lots of hundreds of thousands of miles and airplanes. My wife and I just did a round the world deal. Uh, we did 77,000 miles in 55 days preached every continent and had about 8,000 people saved. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. What's going on is awesome. And, and everybody always asks me, why do I go to small churches, non-famous churches? Let me tell you why. Because I was in a cotton field with about 40 folks. And this famous missionary came. And when he showed up, I don't know, there was like 300 people came. And we, there wasn't even room to put him in the thing. They were standing out in the parking lot. And the healings and the miracles, and I saw it. God is not designated to fame of men. God moves where there's faith. And so I have decided, my wife and I have chosen not to look up online how many people are at these churches we go to that I don't know, like I didn't know these folks. Or how much money they got, or have or don't have, or how big is their city. We chose to believe God in fasting and prayer that he can pay our way. Amen. That's what we chose. And you know, that doesn't make us good people but it does make us right. It's, it's right to be right with God. Okay? And things are going well for me, y'all. Uh, I get to preach with all the famous people now and heal the sick. And they use me for, I'm what they use as the hammer. I'm the hammer. Because I don't, I'm not afraid. I, I'll, I'll look you right in the face and just tell you the truth. And I watch people turn you know, and get angry. And I just keep hammering. Because the word of God will give you the breakthrough. 
It's not friendship. It's not family, as you think. Most modern Christians believe that. It's not that. Jesus is king. That's what the truth is. So I'm going to say some more stuff in a minute, but right now on Isaac, to brother, brother Isaac, I guess I better call him in public. <laughs> and uh, let him say a few words here, whatever he wants. Go for it. All right. Thank you. How y'all doing? I'll just hold this. Good to see y'all. God bless y'all. Thank you for receiving us and receiving Brother Hogan. It's a it's a blessing and an honor to, to be here. He told you I'm from Alabama. Uh, by, well, I'm from Mexico by way of Alabama. We've been there a long time now. Um, working on 17 years. Been knowing Brother Hogan for, goodness, long time. In the late 90s uh, when I got born again. And um, religion can't save you. I grew up in a, in, a, uh, in a good home, godly people, um, but I saw the disconnect between what the church says and what the church does, and that really ticked me off. So I spent a lot of years rebellious and uh, playing the game. I could put on a suit and tie with the best of them and go to church. Man, I'd go to church every Sunday because that's what you do, right? But I had you all tricked because it looked like I was doing good on the outside, but I wasn't. So um, it's a long story, but God came and got me back. And I had an encounter with Jesus. That's what you need. You need an encounter with Jesus. He came and sat down in my little sports car riding down I-20. And he told me some things. And he gave me a new heart. And I've been serving him ever since. Amen. It hadn't been easy, uh, but it's definitely been worth it. And in all that time is when I heard Brother Hogan speak for the first time. Didn't know who he was. This was back in the day of, of cassette tapes. And it didn't have a name or anything like that on it. So I just listened to this fella talk. And uh, he was talking about dead raisins and blinded eyes being opened and casting out devils. And that sounded like the Bible to me, right? So I, I, was, I, was, I was on it, man. I said, let's do this. And so... Long story, but we got to go down, some, some buddies, buddies of mine, it was six of us, and actually three of us live and work in Mexico still today. So it was an awesome time, but um, the first time I went, I decided I couldn't do it. Uh, my flesh was in absolute torment because where we live and work is hard. Um, but I was sitting on top of a mountain out in the middle of nowhere, and the fella that came and sit in my... Uh, my sports car that day, he came back to see me up to, on top of that mountain. And he gave me a new heart again. You need, you need encounter. You got to hear me. You need encounter. You need Jesus to come and say your name. You need him to come and say things to you face to face. That's what you need. It's good to hear Brother Hogan say it. It's good to, let, to hear me say it. But that can't sustain you. That's the doorway. That's a gateway. That's the gateway. I was, when y'all were talking, I got to thinking about that story. I read it somewhere around here. Ezekiel 47. Y'all have all read it. The river coming out of the temple. The river's flowing out of the gate, right? You get it? Tells him to go out. Oh, he's standing right there uh, at his ankles. He tells him to go out another thousand cubits, and he's to his knees. He tells him to go out again. He tells him... Uh, and he's up to his waist, he tells him to go out again, he's up to his chest, go out again, and he can't even swim, and he's got to swim, he can't stand up anymore, right? The farther away you get from the gate, the deeper the water should get. And if you're still standing in water up to your ankles, you stopped moving and you're wrong. This environment is intoxicating. This environment is awesome, but this environment cannot sustain you. If you're not spending time every day face to face with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then you are not moving like you're supposed to. I see a church, not, I'm not talking about you specifically this place, but it, it 
our people. I'm talking about our people. I see too many people standing in water up to their ankles. And we can't do that anymore. I'd been on the mission field for about 10 years. I want to share a quick story, and I'm going to give it back to Brother David. But I've been on the mission field for about 10 years. Working with this man, he taught me a lot of things, fasting and praying and casting out devils. I'd seen the dead raised, cancer healed, every kind of a miracle you can imagine. I'd seen it with my own two eyes, with my own hands. But I felt weary. I felt fatigued, and I couldn't understand that. And I had a vision. God gave me a vision. And I began to see these amazing people that I know and love, men and women of God. They would walk by me and I would look at them and I would just stare at them for a minute, but then the facade of doing well would disappear and I could see past the facade and what I saw was fatigue and weariness. And then that one would leave and here would come another one. And I'm watching them. One after one, they'd come and look me in the eyeballs. And I would see the facade and the lie, the plastic that we all show everybody, that would disappear, and I could see past it, and I saw the fatigue. Amen. And I began to weep as I'm seeing the vision, and I asked God, I said, how is this possible? I know these people. I've raised the dead with these people. How is this possible? And the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, come to me, all ye. <laughs> who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest for your souls, it says. He didn't say come to church. He didn't tell me to go to David Hogan. He said, come to me. We started going to church and quit coming to Jesus and the wheels fell off. We will never be the flame that we're supposed to be in the earth if we do not steward our own personal flame in the secret place. I love the men and women of God that, that the Father saw fit to put in my life. But just like this man has shown me my whole life, the first thing, the most important Thing is to sit at the feet of Jesus. If you're not doing that, you're not doing anything. Stop. If you're the one holding it up, drop it. If you're the one holding it up, drop it. And when you get face to face with the Father, when you sit face to face, and He speaks to you, and He says your name, the world will change for you. And He will do things inside of you that no man can do. You're getting some perspective that you need to hear. I've gotten to walk with one of the most powerful men of God that exists on the planet today. You're getting to hear some things that you don't get to hear very often. And you better listen. I'm thankful to God that I get to do life with this man, but he cannot sustain me. I must sit in the presence of the living God. That's what sustains me. Right? Come on. Let's do this. I love you. I encourage you. I love you. You're my people. I believe in what the Father is doing, but I believe we are in a day that there is a revival, but it's not in this house. It's a revival in your house. Amen. When you steward the secret place, the hidden devotion life that you have with the Father, if you will steward that life, this life will actually become what it's supposed to be in the earth today. Belton can't hold it. Texas can't hold it. The earth cannot hold it. It is His kingdom come. On the earth today. But only when His people do what He said to do. He said, come to me. Can you hear that? I love you. I bless you. Now let's stir up our hearts and realize that this day is a, 
it, it, this, this is an appointed time. I believe that. Do you believe that? I believe this is an appointed time. But let this be a gate where God gives us a new heart and then we step out into those deep waters. And we spend time sitting at the feet of Jesus and we change the world. Amen? Amen. God bless y'all. Holy Ghost. I have to tell you what the problem is. Me. I am your problem. Because I believe that everybody that says Jesus is king, that really believes that in their heart, can do whatever he did. I believe that. I tell, I tell new converts in Mexico, soon as, they, as soon as they're born again, just got through praying with us, go raise the dead. Because you can't. If you believe Jesus was raised from the dead, God will let you raise the dead. And you don't believe that, see? But I do. That's why they call me a believer. Because I believe. I don't, I don't need you to teach me. I don't need your school. I don't need your holy water. I don't need anything about you. What I need is Jesus. What you need is Jesus. And I'm not mad at you. I, I'm not. But I do know that hell is trouncing your home. Y'all are in debt. Pass your eyeballs. You have sickness, two, three, four, five of them at your house that you can't get rid of. And you didn't ask them to come. They came because they have the power to overrun you. So I need to help you in Jesus' name. Okay, can I do that please? So, uh, are y'all aware of uh, Rick Joyner over here, the famous prophet bunch over there, Morning Star thing? I was over there probably, uh, I don't know, a year ago or a year and a half maybe. I don't think it's been, it hadn't been two years. And so I'm over there at uh, where they started out there at Moravian Falls. And I'm, I'm, things are, you know, I don't, please, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend you, but I have to say what I know gets the dead raised. And it's not compatible or palatable with modern charismatic religion. Not most of the time, okay? And I'm not against you as a person. I'm against a demon that's diffusing and polluting and bewildering and deluding the church, God's house. Our job, our responsibility is to renew, revive, rekindle fire in people. So I'm, I'm out there, right? And... Uh, there's y'all know them. They're famous prophets. Well, I don't get along with prophets very well. I I, I just don't. Uh, it wasn't really a choice because I am a seer sometimes, uh, not like them, but sometimes. And and I'm there in the house full of these famous guys. I mean, these people. Boy, they, they, they got lots of books and intelligence and all that. And me, I don't have any of that. All I got out of the deal was to be able to raise the dead. Uh, see, I'm, y'all believe in these seers. I don't. I believe in Jesus. Uh, so, so it's a thorn. It's a, it's an obstacle. Uh, how to progress everybody together? Because we're not seeing eye to eye, right? Uh, because I'm what's called a doer. They're what's called a seer. So there's conflict. And, and, and I'm telling you, they brave to invite me in there because I'm going to tell them. 
because I don't fear them. I, I don't fear you. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I respect Texas. I, I've been in and out of here. I, we have a thing down here around Harlingen for the last 40 years, an office and all that. So I'm more Texan than Louisiana and Mexican, all that sorts of piles and stuff. I like you, but that will not sway me. I like this land. I'm telling you, I'm not here to curse you. This land needs some soldiers of the gospel. This land needs men of God and women of Zion. The demon is trying to tear this place to pieces. And the church is letting it happen. It ain't Democrat. It ain't Republic. It ain't a particular individual or a group of people. It is a sleeping church in the power of God that's the problem. And I'm, I want to help you wake up. Please. At least hear me out, all right? It's not going to be a waste of your time. I'm over there. Now, th look, what are, all these things I'm fixing to tell you are not my fault. You realize, don't you realize that? I, I am probably one of the most gifted men in this room, if not the most. I can do anything. There ain't nothing I can't do, uh, really. Any kind of job, well, carpentry, heavy machinery, 18-wheelers, race cars, motorcycles, airplanes. I can do anything. Offshore, uh, dive, fish, bring it. But that's not enough to have intellect and experience and be gifted. You need the power of the gospel. You, you need to be able to walk up on something broke that's in the natural, it's broke. And put it and touch it. And energy flow out of you and fix it. Money can't do that. And in this room, if if all of us were to get in agreement, there's enough people in this room to take over America. Because of who you are and your background and your history and all of that, I know what we can do. You just have chosen to take a softer route because it's easy. And you're just letting something great go by and I, I can't be all right with that. I, I can't. I feel obligated to look at you and gouge you. I feel I feel obligated <laughs> because it'll help this land if if the born again believers will put their foot down and their praise up. So I'm in this real famous environment. For heaven's sakes, it's Bob Jones's house, it's Bobby Connor's house. For heaven's sake, these people are famous. And when they speak, it happens. Their words don't fall to the ground. Okay. And here I go rolling up in there, some hillbilly from a mountain in Mexico. I work with one of the top five poorest people in the world. And I, I don't feel like I'm behind in anything. And the reason being, you can't do what I can do. God is with me. And your problem is, I believe it. And it makes me be a problem for you. Because I'm not willing to be okay with your loss. You got these pets at the house that are killing you. And they're off, they're trespassing. And that's illegal in every state in the United States. But we allow it. You hear me? Okay. So I'm up in there, right, with these famous, these people are famous. 
in, the, in the, this guy's pastor's name, David White. He's a friend of mine, has been for a long time. And he rolls up on me. He's running the thing. He goes, Brother David, you're going to speak tonight. And the place is packed. I mean, it's important. <laughs> and I said to him, I am not. I mean, look at me. <laughs> and he says, exactly. You are going to preach the gospel. I said, I will not. I come here. I want to hear one of them famous guys get up and be a God oracle and, you know, go into some kind of trance and just sit there and, you know, smoke start happening or something. Or gold, or gold or feathers or something. Something happened. Something, something famous. I want to see it. He said, no, I didn't, I, we, that ain't what we want. We want the dead to raise, David. And you know how. I said, I do. I, I can do that. Uh, in any environment, I can do that. I said, it's easy. He said, exactly. Bring it. So I rolled over, I rolled over to Ms. Hogan, and I said to her, I said, dude, they want me to preach. I said, look around you. And she did. She said, what? I said, look who's here. She said, I am looking at who's here. You. You're the best preacher I know. That really helps men, ladies. When you, and it helps ladies, men, when you encourage them like that. That's a suggestion and counsel. There, there's my whole marriage pro, uh, sermon. Right there it is. Encourage one another. Well, it is called today. I said, fine. And then I'm going to spit fire on them then. That's how it's got to be. Cause, cause, because I can't see. I, I'm, I'm the guy that it takes faith for me to take the next step. Well, see, that's what God likes. Faith is how you please God. The reason I know that it's because it says in Hebrews somewhere. <laughs> 11, 6. <laughs> Without faith, what? Then why are you trying to please God by making money and being rich and famous? And being a politician and knowing people and bread and your butter with man's way. What? What do you think that's going to work? When clearly it states, without faith, it ain't going to happen. Because you got God pleased. And here's what your Bible says. When God is pleased with you, even your enemies will be at peace with you. So that's how you gauge what's going on, I'm telling you. So I roll up there, you know, and they did, they got the most famous singers in the world. And they're up there live, just and it's just to them a normal service, just banging it out. Tunes are just flying everywhere. I mean, it's 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 prophetic. All of them are prophetic. All of them, the singers, everybody. Because the songs they're singing, you never heard them before. They just, it's just coming out of them. It's awesome. I, I'm telling you, I'm just going. Because I'm used to going to church and having to dodge bullets, chase snakes off, and things like that. You know, not, not, not this awesome stuff. And I'm standing there. I just got going, not very long, right? And this guy over here in the real famous, the, the, you know, it's, it's like the more to my right you are, that's how famous you are. There's a whole section of these real studious prophets. And all of a sudden one of them jumps up. Uh, my wife told me he was handsome. To me he was just a regular old redneck fella. Had on, on thing I liked about it was that pair of boots he had on. 
They had on some nice boots. <laughs> and that man went off, and I'm looking at him. I, mean, I just got going, and all of a sudden, I mean, he just freaked. And I'm looking at him. I thought, they don't do that here. This thing is organized. You don't let God in, especially in the beginning. If you don't let God in, he gets the last few minutes, 15, 20 minutes at the end. And I'm sitting there looking, and I mean, this guy's feet are moving. I don't know how fast, but fast. It didn't look natural. Turns out it wasn't. It was supernatural. I mean, well, see, I'm looking at him. I'm thinking, it must be methamphetamine. <laughs> this guy must have hit some crack cocaine before he came in here. Look at the way he's, that ain't no human can do that. But it wasn't, it wasn't drugs. It was something similar. It's called the Holy Ghost. But it's legal. See, hell's stuff is illegal. God's stuff is legal. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. Because many of you in this room right here, you're addicts, you're drug addicts, but because there's some guy that's trying to get his car note paid, he writes you a thing with a funny little signature on it and you run down to the pharmacy and you pay lots of money so you can be a, an addict. I'm going to tell you that because here I stand, 68 years old, and I have no meds. None. My body's healthy. Look at me. I'm healthy. Th this is what the problem is. For you, I'm a healthy human being. So I I'm not going to understand when you try to talk me into your drugs. To understand that it's legal. It may be legal with men, but God loves you. Amen. And uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not talking to you out of anything. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. Amen. You can trust him. So, now, this guy's going off, and I'm just looking at him. And then he broke rank. I mean, he blew chairs, pe knocked people down. And, and I'm going, it's got to be cocaine, man. I mean, who's going to roll up in a church? I mean, unless you, you any of y'all remember R.W. Schambach? If you remember them R.W. Schambach days, I mean, every service he ever did, somebody broke out like that and went wacko and running around. I mean, but these ain't R.W. Schambach days. These are days of organization and everybody knows how to manage the river and the fire. We got that river throttled and that, that glory. We got it. We let it out in spurts. Men have to vote it in and out. So, uh, and, I, and so the ushers come running up. What do you want to do? Because they wasn't used to it either. <laughs> I said, capture him. <laughs> so, no kidding. Listen. See, I'm a hunter, you know, trapper guy from the swamp. And you get an intrusive animal, you trap the thing. Uh, that's, you, you know, you set trap and you... <laughs> so here goes. I wish you'd have seen it. It was about six of these good old boys chasing this fella. They had on some nice boots as well. And they going around and, and everybody we're laughing so hard. I mean, I was I was impressed. Because nobody wouldn't help. Everybody thought it was awesome. Okay, well finally they tackle him. And, I'm, and even though they captured him, it didn't stop his movement. So that let me know it was spiritual. 
And I ain't figured out whether it's the negative or the positive <laughs> spirit, because it could be either one. I'm telling you, everything you see in church doesn't mean it's God. Because hell comes to church more regular than you let heaven come. And so they dragging his, and he is bucking and screaming and I mean, and he was a well-dressed, you know, real nice western shirt and nice breeches, uh, boots, and, but now his hair's all, you know, he ain't, <laughs> he ain't put together like he was when he walked in. <laughs> and they drag him up there, and they can't hardly hold him. I mean, it's like six guys on this fella. And I'm going, who in the cat hair are you? Cause like 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 I don't I how did how did I know he was the third guy under uh, brother Rick Joyner in the whole Morning Star movement? This guy is the one knows better than to act like a Christian. <laughs> Cause when you, when you're the third one in command of a. Of, a, of an organization at large, you know you can't act like God's on you. You got to act like you safe for humans. Y'all all laughing because you know. You know I'm right. Now what? They dragging this fella and he come up there and I mean he's going, you did it! And I'm looking at him, what? I said, y'all check. I pulled my shirt up. I ain't got drugs. I don't do drugs. <laughs> he said, it ain't drugs. It is the Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> and I looked over at Brother David, the guy that invited me. I said, do you know this joker? <laughs> he said, I do. He's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> God done broke in and got the bosses going. You know we can't have that. We can't have a revival amongst the pastors. What's wrong with you? God made a mistake. I said, dude, you got to come across. I mean, he's, he is free. I mean, his body is moving like I ain't never seen a white guy move. I'm telling you, dude, listen to me. And I said, son, Matthew. He said, it's your fault, David. I said, no, sir. No, 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 no. We got we to sort some stuff out. You said it's the Holy Ghost fire. Then you got to understand that ain't me. If that's really fire on you, I want what you got. If you ain't on drugs, I want what hit you. I said, now what hit you? He said, I saw it. I said, oh, you're a seer. <laughs> and then a couple of them prophets that I actually trusted stood up and said, we saw it too, David. I said, come across, fellas. What is it? Now, here's how it went. And, and I, I wish I could see like they see, but I have to have, I'm the guy that has to have the faith and actually do the job without seeing I believe, I believe it was the boss, wasn't it, that said, blessed are they that actually do the job without having to see. I believe that was the boss said that. <laughs> wasn't that the boss said that? <laughs> Seems like. Seems like I read it like 6,000 times. So, this is really funny. Because it gets more funny. It don't slow down in funny. I said, what is it? He said, David, you're standing up there talking and all of a sudden the war angel of God appeared beside you. And when he said that, I, man, I jumped around. <laughs> Where is that? Where is that? Where's he at now? Because, I mean, I can't see him. They can see him. He's just going to walk up and whack me. Bah! I said, what did he do to cut you up like this? I mean, nobody cuts up like this in church. Man, you'd think God was in here if 15 people or 20 people started cutting up like you. We can't let anybody believe God's with us. 
We've got to all act like we know what we're doing and that we're in charge. He said, Brother David, that angel walked over to me and all these prophets are going, yes, yes, we saw, we saw. And he just touched him on the, foot, on the top of his head. And when he did, that's when the guy broke out. I said, why you? If he can't, why didn't he touch me so I could see? I want y'all's sight. I have to do it by faith. I mean, who does that anymore? It's by the arm of the flesh, or we don't do it. Say yes. yes. But we're going to get over it. Say it. Yes. We're going to let heaven have us. We're going to throw ourselves at his mercy. And he's going to help us in Jesus' name. What I didn't know, and this is going to impress you, the fella that was gone berserk, real famous individual, y'all all know him. And, but what I didn't know was he was at the, at the mall with his family, because that's what you do. You go to mall with your family. And he's walking out there to get his car, and this car, the accelerator stuck and hit him. And those, you know, those concrete things that they put up to block cars pinned his leg up against that concrete thing and almost ripped it off. Well, what I didn't know was for the last four years that that man been in rehab. Pins, plates, screws, bolts, and nuts. And he was trying, to, they were trying to teach him how to walk again. And the reason he came, because in a lot of our meetings, the metal gets taken out and new bones get put in people. He was there for that. And the angel came and touched him and when the angel touched the man, he got a new leg. Now, that's pretty impressive. And I'm just looking at him. And I looked over at Brother David What he said, it's true, it's true, Brother David. Now, well, let him run then for heaven's sake. The man ain't running four years. Let him run. So they let him go. Pew. All right, now watch. In the morning, I'm down at Fort Mill. That's Rick Joyner's place. I'm down there, and I'm walking in, and they got the oddest church you've ever seen. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's odd. For me, to me. So I go roll in there, and they said, you're going to be sitting at this table. And, you know, and I look to see who was at the table. Well, there's... Rick Joyner and about four of them really famous prophets. <laughs> and that man looked up at me. He didn't say, good morning. Do you want a cup of coffee and a donut? He didn't say, hello, David. He didn't say, here's what the man said to me. You. <laughs> You're tearing up my house. And I'm looking at him. And now this guy, you don't mess with him. I don't know what you know about these people, but there's some people you don't shoot a shot at. This is one of them. Very powerful man. God likes him as well. <laughs> and so that's what I said to him. Sir, with all respect, I'm going to tell you this with due respect because I respect you. I've heard about you my entire life. I know you because I saw your picture on the back of a book one time. I said, but you're going to listen to me. I don't tear up churches. I heal them. If I tow it up, that means God's going to fix it. He said, David Hogan, how did you get the war angel of God? You came and you was there 15 minutes. <laughs> and we've been praying over this guy with fasting and prayer for four years. 
And we don't get no angel. I said, it's not my fault. Y'all the seers. I'm just a doer. I have to do things by faith. He said, that's my son. And he pointed up to him. That boy, here come that boy walking over. Different pair of boots. I saw, I was looking at him. I always look for, see what kind of boots they got on. It matters what kind of boots a man wears. And so I was looking at them boots and he come up, put his head down on my chest, grabbed me and his wife is there. She's bawling. Kids are bawling. And I'm going, what the? What do y'all want? Thank you, Brother David. See, Y'all got to hear me. That is the reward. When you seek God your whole life and you do his will, I don't want none of their book money. I don't want the fame. I don't want that stuff. I, want even, they, I got free television time with all of them and I won't take it. You got to listen. That ain't what I need. Can I tell you what I need? Can I show y'all what I need? Is it okay if I tell you, babe, Miss Linda? Can I tell you what I need? Are you okay with that? All right. How much time do I have? Where the boss at? You the boss. I'm married to one of them. I know what she said. <laughs> They don't say much, but they know what they say when they say it. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all. I mean this. I'm not pulling your chain. I'm not demeaning you. I'm not playing you. How much money did, 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 I, did I tell you you had to t send me uh, to bring me in here? How much? All right. That's important. Go, listen to me. We, we, we do this own offerings and faith and on and on. But I'm an eighth generation preacher. And when I was a kid, I watched the abuse. And I determined in my heart if God ever allowed me the opportunity, I would never misuse that in Jesus' name. So that's important. Because here, here, if you want God you don't need to chase money, Amen. power, and women. Amen. Let me show you what you need to chase, can I? Yes. All right, watch. On your knees, on your face. And you need to stay there because my Bible says, and so does yours, in Luke chapter 3, it says, there is one who stands amongst you whose shoe latch you are not worthy to undo. That's what you need to find is that pair of shoes. Because you get those feet in front of you and get a hold of them, you done good. You can get people new legs. I got me a Dodge Ram box sitting right out here in the front. You know what's in my two boxes on both sides of my bed of my truck? Body parts. Now, uh, chief police out there, he's probably going to want to check my truck. For <laughs> <laughs> All you're going to find is some old crescent wrenches and <laughs> a couple of hammers. <laughs> but that, that's in the physical. But in the spiritual... I was told there's somebody in here with cancer. I see somebody over here with, with, with autism and Down syndrome. And I'm, I look around in my environment and I know that there's diabetes in there. You got these pets, these arthritis and these cancers, these tumors and these, these, these glaucomas and these cataracts and these. And you've learned how to chunk stuff and appease those little animal things that just badger you 24 7. 
Well, I come here to take them off you, if that's all right. And, and, and not because I can. It's because I believe the one who can is here. And his name is Jesus. So I told Brother Rick these words. I said, you know, you know probably better than I do because you wrote all the books. You know everything. You know I can't command them things around. They come and go when somebody else gives the orders. The boss tells them they show up. See what she said about them angels a while ago? I know that to be a fact. They in every service now. They coming. They here. They're. You, 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 you. If I could get you to believe just a little, your world would be radically changed. In every area. Every area. Shaka batana batani. I'm telling you, you see me, right? Now, y'all don't know, and I, I'm not going to spend much time on numbers now. I probably won't say it, actually. But we now have churches in every continent on the planet. I'm part of a team that we're managing over 7,000 churches. It's a big deal uh, that we become part of. And now, I'm not going to show it either, but we had, a, we had our first dead raising in South Africa the other day. In, a, in an unreached people group. We did it. I roll in there, they're going to kill me. They didn't. Uh, but they sure promised us they was. And the last white people that went in there was 10 years ago and they killed all of them. Felate them. And then they invited us to come, or they, the people that I went with invited me to go there. And I said, what's so important about me going? They said, because they, they're going to kill you. And we've noticed, we've noticed that, that you don't die that easy. And we want you to, we need help breaking down these barriers. And I said, I ain't going, knuckleheads. I mean, I, I understand that I don't see it like you do, but if I see a bullet, I'm going to dodge it, son. I'm not, oh, the bullet's not coming. Because <laughs> them AK-47s can put anybody down. And them machetes can chop off any head. But let me give you some advice and some knowledge about this. Only when God says it can they do it. What you're seeing is a son of God. I am a son of God. And y'all, you see how much energy I've got, how much joy and I like what I do it's showing because I can do this I do this every day every day I do this somewhere and the fire of God and healings happen every day and it's nice I'm just a regular old red, 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 uh, roughneck look see I lost my finger in the oil field I got all them scars and all that but what you got to live with, it's not my fault. This hand, this oil field hand, abused as it was in oil field. I made lots of money, though. But as abused as, <laughs> as it was and is, has raised 37 people from the dead. Yay! This hand. L listen to me. This is important to you. My wife is still with me. My kids, I'm not hungry. I'm not broke. I'm not mad. I'm not, I'm right. Jesus is king. And some of you have grievances with people that have ripped you off and, and you've made, some of you made bad decisions. Stop it. Just stop. Take a breath. And go 180 the other way. Amen. You ain't got to keep running with hell. Just, just stop. I need you to hear me. We can do this. All of us can. 
Everybody thinks I have figured out something special that you don't know. But the odds are high that you know as many or more Bible verses than I do. The difference is I do what I know. That's the difference. I have a great heritage. I was born like as him. I was born in one of the greatest families. I don't know if you, I don't know how to get it better. My mama, boy, she's still alive. Just saw her a few days ago, ninety three and healthy. She just loves Jesus. Everybody ask her because she walks with me, you know, and she's so proud of me, of course. And she just pats me, you know. <laughs> And everybody goes, how'd you raise him? And she just puts her head on my shoulder and pats me. He's a good boy. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And they go, how, how come you're healthy? Oh, I love Jesus. That's her answer. Well, when are you going to die? Because I told her, I, <laughs> I told her, Mom, you're 93. Time to check on out. <laughs> You're taking up somebody else's space. <laughs> Boy, that, that, that woman, listen to me. You, <laughs> you want to see fire? You, all I got to do is talk to her about three minutes. <laughs> man, that woman's on me, boy. She turned to me. She said, let me tell you something, young man. Dude, I'm 68. She said, you listen to me, young man. I'm not going anywhere till my father determines it's best. So I need you to get that because you see I got it. I, I'm telling you, you know, I'm part Blackfeet Indian tribe. I'm part Cherokee. I'm part German. I'm part uh, Irish. So I'm what's called an American. <laughs> so I want to share a couple of things with you I don't know if, do I have a little more time all right let, let, let me let me just share a couple more things I want to do a miracle did we get the picture up is it go okay well just a minute let me read let me read a bible verse let me let me appease some religious spirits <laughs> at least read a couple of verses <laughs> Okay, a real famous set of verses over here in Mark chapter 16. Y'all all know what they say before I read it. Oh, can I do the Amplified? Is that okay? Okay, thank you. So I, get, I get mixed up on all the these and thous. And you, start, you start these and thou, and then I'm thinking snakes are going to come in here. We had to start picking up snakes. I mean, I can. I'm from the swamp. I mean, I know how. But I'll end up popping your old snake's head off and then you'd be mad at me. <laughs> Had to carry him down there to fries and have him cook him up for us. <laughs> I like it actually. I like me some snake. Okay, Mark 16, y'all there? All right. Uh, we're looking, I'll well, start in verse 12. After this he appeared, now this is Amplified Bible in a different form to two of them as they were walking along the way into the country. See, Jesus can do what Jesus wants to. He don't need you to, to verify, <laughs> authenticate. He don't need your little, praise the Lord, <laughs> your little nod. I'm telling you, Jesus is king. If it says he changed his form and these men that were running with him for three years didn't recognize him, then his form was changed. And then he revealed himself back to them and they go, oh my God, it was Jesus. Oh, oh. And then they go run and tell the apostles, you know, that we saw Jesus, praise the Lord. He's alive, like he said he was. Verse 13, they returned, told the others. What's this? They did not believe. Say it. They did not 
but that's not me. That's why they call me a believer. That's why they call me a son of God. That's why they call me a favorite son. Because I'm what's called a believer. In Jesus' name. Verse, where are we? 13, 14, 14. Afterwards he appeared to the 11, the apostles themselves, praise the Lord. As they reclined. Oh, that's why they got in trouble. They was in a recliner watching the NFL <laughs> and drinking a Corona because you, after all, they got grace in their life and they're free now. I'm going to have to hold my tongue on you sipping saints. Because you ain't. You sipping saints, you ain't. Because you can't do nothing but proclaim how wrong I am. Oh, yeah, that's right. This hand, 37 dead raising. How's your corona hand? How many dead it got up? Excuse me? That's what I thought. Corona can't raise the dead. It's a devil. I guess you know where I stand now, don't you? I stand with Jesus. That no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. That's where I stand. Y'all clear? All right. Let's thought I'd clear myself up. Oh, well. Here's what it says. Afterwards, he appeared to them as they reclined. And, and what did he do? He didn't come in there. Now, everybody's good folks. Praise the Lord. You got grace in your lives. Now, you know, praise the Lord. That's not how it went. Jesus walked through the wall. First thing out of his mouth, he's spitting cotton all over everybody. Matthew you knuckleheads. You unbelievers. You walked with me for three years. What's wrong with you? You in here crying like a bunch of... My stuff keeps trying to get out. I have to hold my tongue. <laughs> Look what he says. He reproved him, reproached him for what reason? It's unbelief. So tonight, say these words. Lord Jesus, I give in. I get rid of my unbelief. Say it. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at verse 15. He said to them, sit until the elders are satisfied with your maturity. Is that what he said? No. <laughs> sit until next month. We're having a deacon board meeting and we'll vote on it. Is that what Jesus, Jesus said? That's the way to go, right? I don't think that's what he said. I think it says, get your bohunkuses up and get out there in that world and make me some disciples. Go ye. It's not sit ye and wait until you feel endowed with power. It's go ye and I will feel you on the trail. I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. That's why you get such straight answers out of me is because I can't see I have to do to get the results. Because my Bible says these signs will who? Right. At least you know what it says. Verse 16, he who believes, say that's me. I'm a believer, say it. Say it, I believe Jesus is king. Come on, say it. <laughs> if you didn't by now, you should be saying it out of, out of the truth. Because <laughs> I know how to convince you. You understand, I'm good at my job, right? I can talk you into doing this. I'm telling you. 
I was in a war zone a few, few weeks ago over in West Africa, in northern Sierra Leone on the Guinea border. It's a Muslim state. We had 200 soldiers around us, and the commander told me, don't you go out there. He said, we know you. I said, listen to me, listen to me. Thank you, thank you. But I'm going out there and healed sick. Let me tell you why. That's my job. I'm what's called a son of God. And the Son of God believes God, not men. Amen. Amen. And he, he said, suit yourself. But I'm going to stand up here with my men. I said, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I'm going, y'all, uh, these numbers are so large, but in 10 days, there was 12,000 Muslims saved. 10 days. Hey, you don't have to believe because that's, that, that's why they call you an unbeliever. <laughs> that's what unbelievers do. Wait, they don't believe. Oh, you're right. You believe logic and reason over God. Well, yeah, duh. Logic and reason is enemies of faith. Jesus is king. Yeah. All right. So, verse 17. These signs, say signs, signs. Come, to me come to me and follow me, and follow me. Because, I'm a because I'm a believer. And the word of God says, the word of God says these signs, these signs will follow those who, believe, Those who believe, I believe. I believe. So let's see what the signs are. Okay, we got them all at attention now. Let's, just, let's pick them out of the crowd. Which ones do we want? Let's do this list. In my name, they will drive out demons. Say, yeah, duh, say it. Yeah. They will speak in new tongues. Say, well, of course. They'll pick up serpents. Why, yeah. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Say, of course. And they'll lay their hands upon the sick and they will get well. Now, I want you to look at me. I, I wish my wife was here to, because y'all, you know, more than likely you'll believe her better because she's a little, just a little chubby great grandma person. Just a good little person, you know. I go around the world, all the 88 nations now. I eat and drink everything. Amen. Look at me. Amen. And you. Yes. You have to have special water, special little ground up, little green junk. You mix it up. <laughs> you weigh everything with a ground meter thing. And you, you have 14 devils in your bodies. See, I don't get it. You're supposed to be the healthiest nation on the planet. You have the most knowledge, but you are becoming one of the weakest. It's our fault. Say, I take my responsibility. Say it. I am a son of God. And I awake myself to that fact. In Jesus' name, these signs will follow me because I do believe in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Now, hold this. Don't put it up yet. I might need it again to, to verify again. <laughs> if you will, chunk that thing up, please. I'm going to put up a picture. Uh, it's just going to be a couple of, couple of Aztec Indians is what it's going to be. Oh, you'll get it. I have faith. You can do it. There, there it is, yeah. Okay, how do I get rid of this row of lights here so they can see it better? They don't need to see me. They need to see that picture. There you go. I oh, want you to look at that. I'm sorry he's got on a Texas uh, volunteer hat. I should have put should have put a Longhorn hat on him or something. 
or ba Baylor, that's the ones right now, Baylor. Baylor's the ones whacking and dacking right now. They, they won a while ago, didn't they? Didn't they beat the Longhorns a while ago? Say yes. yes. <laughs> Power's going off in one minute. Well, y'all get a quick picture look, okay? So you see how smart everybody is? They, they're smart and everything, but they can't raise dead. I don't know what's the matter with them. <laughs> Told you he got him a degree. That boy's smart. All right, now listen. Now, any minute you get tired of hearing these miracles, I'll huff. You're not going to offend me. I don't care. I don't give a, fly, a flip. <laughs> now, you know what I figured out? I can go down here to one of y'all's opium dens down here, and I can go in there and be myself. You know, they don't care. But I can roll up in here, and I have to act like you want me to, or you'll get up huffing and leave. Isn't that weird? Weird thing, isn't it? I can roll in there and preach the gospel to them people in any language. I can cuss and spit. They don't care. But you, you think you're free till you meet a free man. Amen. Amen. And then all of a sudden you got rules. That's why the power is limited because we believe in our rules instead of Jesus. See, I'm surprised because uh, I always draw hookers and junkies. I'm surprised <laughs> that one of them, uh, you know, I'm, I am. I don't know what, they, they really scared of you or something. Cause y'all don't let them in your services. And they're the very ones Jesus died for. Amen. He loves them exactly Amen. like he loves you. Amen. Ain't no difference. And I'm not mad at you, I just don't agree. I just don't. And so, da, 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 da. let me get started on this. There, there, I will tell you three miracles. This, to you, this looks like a, I don't know, just some poor Mexicans. That ain't who they are. That's my son and daughter. And you'll do well to back away. Because I don't play and I don't bluff. You understand or not? Amen. Jesus is king. I just soon you back up from all your racism. Because I ain't going to live with it. Clear? Okay. <laughs> this is an Aztec couple. When I first got there, she wasn't even born yet. And now she's a grandma. Isn't that something? That tells you how long I've been doing this. Now, I, I want to tell you their story. That truck sitting behind him, I gave that to him myself. Proof, did I or not? That man right there runs probably, I don't know, how many churches? Is it 10 or a dozen? How many? Oh, it's more now. It's more than that. 15, 20. I don't know how many. Come on, come across with a number. 20, 30. All right. He, he, all right, about 33 to 35 years ago, I was a kid. I went to Mexico, right? It's coming up on 40 years. And I went down there, I had nothing. Everybody was mad at me. There's no way I could have been right. In my family, everybody's, everybody's Christian, everybody's preachers, and I'm eighth generation. I'm the first missionary. Uh, and God spoke into my mind, Mexico, and I didn't know what that was no more than you do. You probably, because of your proximity and that, know more about it than I did. I was, I was on the other side of the Sabine River. 
in a swamp. And so when God spoke that word to me, I was sitting there going on my way to work one morning. My family was small and babies and that. And I told my wife, what's a Mexico? That word just came into my mind. She said, I don't know. Write it down. So I did. I dated it. But I, I, let it, I went on to work. You got to go to work. Say yes. yes. You got to work. You don't work, you don't eat. Everybody knows that one more than any of them. So you got to work. If you want to live your life the way y'all want it, you have to put in some hours somewhere. A few, a few weeks later, I, uh, it came back to me because I always sit down with my family every morning before we start the day and read a couple of chapters in the Bible, pray for a few minutes, and then we start our day. Boom, that happens every day. It has been for the last 40-something years. All right. And before that, my, my daddy did that with us my whole life. So to me, that's how you do life, is you seek God. So, uh, I get down there, and I, I don't have any, I was used to lots of money in the oil field. I, have, I was a kid, and I was a good hand. And before I left, I was a kid now. I was in my early, mid-20s, and when I left, and uh, I was pulling down some change, around five grand take home a month. And back then, that was a lot more than it is now, but it's still enough now if you live within your means. All right. And so when I run out of money, that was unusual because it has been a while I'd had a good job and I wasn't used to not having money. So trying to believe God <laughs> and live out of thin air he can do something. That, that's unusual to me because I'm the guy that works with my hands and brings home money to the kids and the wife. And I, 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 I don't want to be a bum because I can do the job. Do you understand? I'm strong, I'm healthy, and I'm, I'm intelligent. I can do the job. But God wanted me to do his job. So I had to figure out what that was? Well, here's how it went with this, with this family. I heard about a man in a cage. Now, demon possession in our world is different than demon possession in your world. In your world, you try to get as close to the front door of Walmart as possible. And when somebody slips into your parking spot, you just sit there and curse them out, telling them what kind of a devil they are. And to you, that's demon possession because they stole your parking spot. Because <laughs> you forgot to pay your wheelchair lie thing so you can get up close. <laughs> okay, there you go. Now I'm on you now. So I heard about this fella, this demon Possess, and, and now look, it, when it says you can cast out demons, all of us think it's some sort of a little, <laughs> or a little spit or something. Well, it's a little bit more than that, turns out. <laughs> I heard about this place, and I went looking for it. Now, when you're a widow in Mexico, People are not very, a white guy in Mexico, people are not very forthcoming with information because they don't believe that El Huero is El Diablo because you've proved to Mexico that you don't like them, which not you, and I see some of y'all shaking your heads. No, it's not true. Yes, it is. It is. And so when I get there, for the most part, because I'm way beyond the border, things are good for me, for the most part. But they not they won't talk. Because if they give out information and something happens, they're responsible for that. And people like me say, I got it from them. And then they get killed. And you don't understand that. 
because you, all you do is run your mouth, <laughs> incessantly gossiping. And you think that's the power of God. It's not. It's foolishness. You need Jesus. Say it. Yes, I do. And so they won't tell you. So I heard about this place, and I, I figured out some of it. So I went. Fine, I got to the end of the pavement. But there's always a fork at the end of the pavement. And so I chose left. Turns out I was right this time. And I went to the end of the, of the dirt road, and then there's a horse trail. My truck won't fit down it. So I get out, you know, and I say, well, I'm just going to walk and look. So I start walking, you know, and uh, I'm a widow. Widows ain't out there. I'm a white fella. You know, they ain't no white, there ain't none out there. And there's not even mestizos now where I'm at. Mestizos is a mixed breed. What you think is a Mexican, most of them are uh, uh, mixed. <laughs> Either tribes or with Spanish or some Sp uh, Spain people. But out there, they're not mixed. So indigenous. They're Indian. And I'm walking, and, and a lot of them ain't never seen a widow before. So I go rolling past these villages, and next thing I know, these fellas get behind me, and they got guns. They got automatic weapons. And the guy rolls up on me. He says, hey, widow, oh, yeah. Don't you bus. Where are you going, white fella? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm looking for a guy in a cage that's demon-possessed. And the guy starts laughing. He just laughs at me. Because you got to understand how dumb... I must be. Because <laughs> you don't go there. That is not where guys my color go and live. These are rebels. These guys, you don't go there. The law, their law don't go there. So I said, Mira, watch out for the demonio. I'm going to cast that devil out. When well, that guy, he slapped his leg. I mean, he's got a gun. He slapped his leg. He said, vamos. Pero tú vas en frente. He said, let's go, but you're going in the front. So, he, he, so I'm in, and I don't know where to go. So he's telling me where to go. So I'm going. Now, what you don't understand is, by the time I get there, I'm in for 10 hours. All the full drive, all the walk-in, 10-hour day so far. And, and he brings me to this house in his village, and he hollers out a name of a guy. And this old calzone fella, which I can't explain that to you because none of y'all understand that. It's a, it's a, it's a tribal thing uh, where they still wear the, the older Indian clothes. Okay. So out walks this calzone guy. He, that means he don't speak Spanish. So he rolls out there. Oh, man, they are going off in Nahuatl, uh, Aztec. And, uh, and finally, the, the guy with the gun, he says, I'm going to interpret for you. He says, uh, the old man says you can get in a cage with the guy and cast the devil out. <laughs> I said, okay. You know, I don't know that what... All I know is it says cast out devils. I have never, just like you, I have never seen that. Not a real one. I mean, somebody disagrees with you and they start rolling their eyes and you think, oh my God, this is a manifestation. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I roll, I roll up on there, right? And I go in there and I can see a cage. There ain't no electricity. And it's bright sunshine outside. And, and so I'm going in there, and it's dark, right? So my eyes are not there yet. And I hear clink, clink, clink. And I'm looking in there, opening up this cage. They got three locks on this door. And they open it, and they say, this in. So I bend down and go up in there. I'm thinking I'm on, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what was going to happen. And all of a sudden, what? They shut the thing, click, click, click. They locked me in there. Okay, that's a different story. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I mean, how bad could it be? 
And all of a sudden, I hear change. Rattling. And I hear growling way down here. Like, I, I raised Catahoula hog dogs. Anybody know what that is? Uh, one of the best cow dogs, hog dogs. They're good old dogs. And I know that low guttural thing. I know where I'm going to get bit. And I hear it. And I'm trying to look, trying to look, and I hear it. It's coming. I hear it rattling. And all of a sudden, my eyes got better. And I go, what the? There's this fella. He's got chains on his wrists and on his ankles. He's naked. His hair is long and matted. Got food and feces. and uh, it, it, it was scary. And I'm going, blankety blank. Hey, open the door. They go, no, widow. And no, sir. And they go, you know, he eats humans, this fellow. He's a cannibal, this guy. I said, yeah, I got my pocket knife. <laughs> and so I'm, I backed up against the cage and I braced my feet because it's going to happen, right? I mean, here he comes. And all of a sudden, he moved to my, my right and I went over here and my foot got stuck on a rock and I, and I f almost fell down and I went, Jesus! You know, like I was fought, you know how you do when it's automatic, when you've been seeking him, you, that's the first thing, that's your first response. Should be. And when I said, Jesus, this thing went, and I go, one and one, that's two. I saw it. And see y'all's problem with all of this stuff is when you when a fellow sees stuff, you ain't taking that from him. Amen. Ain't nothing you can do to take it from him. No, sir. I watched that demon quiver at the name of Jesus. I saw it. And, and it made sense to me. So I don't know. God let me, he let it make sense. And I stood up. I said, Jesus. Man, that thing, wow. And I said, oh, I got you, boy. And I stepped toward him. Jesus, man, that thing started, you ought to have seen the ruckus. It was a ruckus. That cave was throwing uh, feces on me and eyes on him, boy. Who cares? I can wash that stuff off. But what I'm fixing to put on that demon ain't going to wash off. Jesus. He got to the other end of that, them chains. And he's sitting there like an old cow mad dog growling, wah, wah, cutting up, boy. And I walked over there. Now I got choices. And I, and I chose to ease up beside him and put my leg on him because he's, he's, he's stretched out. So it, it's not as easy for him to hurt me. So I put my leg up against him to hold him with them chains and then I put my hand down and started rubbing his head. That's when it happened. All of a sudden, he just relaxed. And he just came over there, got sat down. It was nasty. He sat down on my shoe, <laughs> grabbed a hold of me, and he's, you know, he's rubbing all that mess on me. Because I, I was I was vomiting. <laughs> And, and I told him, I said, okay, you can open the door now. They go, we ain't opening that door. He will eat us. I said, he's not going to eat you now. Jesus took the devil away. He's gone. There was no tearing and ripping. There was no, it was just a, a sigh, just a relaxing. He went. So they said, we'll let you out. And I'm just sitting there talking to this thing. He won't talk back to me, but I was talking to him. And I left. And the guys with the guns, man, they, they shoulder those guns and they're talking to me. How did you do that? What is that? And so I'm preaching Jesus all the way back to the truck. <laughs> they let me go. They were amazed. They said, when are you coming back? And I told them. They said, we'll be right here waiting on you. 
Wow, gee, thanks. So, all right, now, now this is how it went. I got back a couple of weeks later, and that same old story, you know, end of the pavement, and I still ain't got no money. Ain't none of that changed. And then I'm walking with these guys, and their guns, they have them, but they're shouldered. They were walking, and they're just asking me all kinds of questions about Jesus and God and, and how to live a Christian life and what do you do and how do you do it. And Now, all them guys are now pastors with us now, y'all. It's important. I get back to that place, and, and I, go, I go up there, and, and it's like a party happening. And I go in there, and there ain't no cage. I said, where'd you put the cage? Where'd the man at? They said, come on in. I went in, and it's just full of people, like this many right here, just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> and I'm going, what'd y'all do? Did y'all kill that guy? Whoa. What is this? And they go, the old man, the calzone guy, he says, Perfect Spanish, I joker. <laughs> he says, ¿Qué hiciste con mi hijo? What'd you do with my son? I said, look, I don't know. All I know is the Bible. He said, la Biblia, ¿qué es eso? The Bible, what's that? So I reached in my backpack, pulled out a Bible. I said, can I read it to you? So I read him a few Bible verses. And they go, what is that? I said, what that is is the word of God. And it will heal every one of you. It will save you from a burning hell. And it will put you in a heaven that I, don't, I know very little about. I just know it's right for us to go there. And that was like 40 years ago or something. And now his uncle, the brother to the guy in the cage, is running about 300 of our churches. He works, this guy was knee high, this guy right here was knee high to me when I first went. He was a toddler, that fellow right there in the hat. His wife grew, was born and grew up in the gospel because her parents got saved. Okay, it's the weirdest thing you've ever seen, how powerful the gospel is. We own everything now there. Everything I walked on, we own it. I don't mean own it with title. I mean own it spiritually. There's thousands of believers out there. All right. That's, he's been with me since he was a toddler. He grew up with my family. My son Joseph is, uh, is his boss, as well as his uncle is his boss, and they're best friends. They all grew up, to, everything grew up together, right? And the power of God. But, but see, look, let me, let me, these are great beginnings, but, but, but the gospel is not a spurt environment or a temper or a short term environment. The gospel is an eternal contract. Now, now, now listen to me. Okay. You see, it's easy for me and it's hard to explain because y'all are so dense. You're so busy trying to figure out how to go get some chicken or a Whataburger or a Starbucks coffee. All right, look. Okay, okay. This is like 20, uh, 30, probably 30 something years here. Okay, but what you don't understand is, right? This picture was taken in the morning. That's a morning shot because she was dead all night and got raised from the dead. Okay, see, he started out a toddler, his daddy in a cage. I go in there and they lock me in the cage. God brings his daddy out of the cage. 
the whole stack gets born again. And now we're teaching them how to walk this gospel out, staying with them, staying with them, year after year, bang to bang, bees, every, every kind of devil on the planet trying to stop the gospel. But Jesus just steady pushing them out of the way. And then we roll up on this event and his wife dies. And it happens that some of these people was there and they pray for her all night and God brought her back to life. And the reason it's so valuable is because last year they called me up. I'm in Europe. They called me up. Uh, he was there getting ready because I was coming home and everybody gets ready for all these big massive campaigns. There'll be thousands of people in Yay God. Well, that's all we'll be doing. Just fire, you know. And so everybody gets their stuff ready weeks and months in advance, paints and lights and all everything because the gospel has brought awesomeness to their world. Amen. Where they had nothing, they have food and yes. prosperity and blessing and health and healing. And uh, he's up on a ladder working, working, working because he's an industrious, amazing man. And he fell and he broke his back, what, three, three places? Three. His back is broke. Doo, doo, doo. He's done for. Well, look at him. They, these, all these peoples went out there and they all prayed for him. Other ones of our dead raiser crowd, they all went out there. You know, and, and, he, and, he, and he still broke. And they wait, and they wait. I come home. We go out there together. It's a big wedding. It's, it's like, I don't know, a couple thousand folks are out there. We killed lots of cows and all that. It's a big deal. So you think you know the gospel. And this, these people have been in my life for four decades. I've watched them grow from toddlers to grandpas. And I've watched God heal them all the way. I rolled up, you know, out there. My goal wasn't the wedding, even though that's why I'm there. That's going to happen. And I'm there, and they, you know, and they treat me like I'm a royalty of some kind. Because to them, I am. <laughs> to you, I'm just a knucklehead in tennis shoes. <laughs> and I, that's what I want you to believe I am. But I am a son of God Almighty, and I am a favorite. Yeah. And let me tell you this. You fall off a ladder and your back breaks, I'm the guy you call. Amen. Amen. And you don't care if I got tennis shoes on. <laughs> let me tell you why. Because I went into his house. I told my son, Joseph, which is boss to all, everybody. I told him, I said, work it out. Do, I'll do whatever I got to do because there's lots of important and very powerful people that I've got to be around and uh, it's just, I hate politics, but it's how it goes. When you're powerful, you are. Amen. And, and you got to live a life that's not you to make things flow. And then I wait my turn, wait my turn, do, do what I do. And then all of a sudden my son says, okay, it's time, let's go. So I walk with him. We left the party. We go with a handful of people's. I go to his house. I go in there. It took four men to bring him in there. He's crippled. His back's broke. He'll never walk again. And when he saw me, he just burst into tears. I let you down. I'm so sorry, Pop. I said, look at me. You'll never let me down. Amen. Amen. I don't care if you crawl for the rest of your life. You can't disappoint me. You'll always be my son. End of story. Now come over here and let me hug you, boy. And I grabbed that because they don't hug. They're not huggers like y'all. No, they pick up a machete. You hug them, they pick up a machete and chop you with it. So it's true, right or wrong. So I sit down there and I hug him and put his head on my chest. It's just times you need to lay on somebody's chest, son. And I might be awkward and I might be be clumsy at how to work with you. Let me tell you what I can do. 
I can go out to my Dodge box out there. I can get you a new bat. Because God's with me. Y'all, I rolled up on that fellow. I'm telling you, I, I kissed him on the face like I do. Some of y'all get that in a minute. Some of you going to run. Here's my response. Get the hell on out. You, done, you, you think I owe you something? I told you in the beginning, son, you're up the wrong tree, son. Now listen to me. I'll tell you what I owe you, the truth. Because the truth sets you free. Truth will bring freedom to your home. Truth will bring healing to your, to your body. Just on purpose. Just <laughs> Y'all, how many, it was three or four times we prayed for him. And then I, I'm sitting, it's, it's over like a month, I guess, that he kept, they kept bringing him to these. I mean, this man's in pain. Ah! And he'd say, take me to where Brother David is. And see, it's fire. It's fire, it heals. It's mercy. It's fire off the altar, y'all. That's all you need. I'm telling you, I'm right about this, y'all. All of a sudden, he come walking. I heard. I heard. It, heard he was. We was like. I don't know. What is it from his place driving three hours? Driving. I heard he was driving the truck. I said that ain't legal. Man's got a broke back. How you gonna drive a truck? He come driving up in his truck. Gets out. <laughs> and he's walking a little stiff, you know. And I'm looking at him. How you doing that? He said, Brother David, the other day, y'all prayed for me. Fire hit the top of my head and went down my back. It went, and I'm better. Now what? I said, and we was at another conference. I said, tell him, folks, what you just told me. So he gets the microphone. He's up there. You know, he's gimped up a little still. He said, yeah, I was broke. Brother David came. These other guys came. They prayed for me three or four times, and, and, and my back popped all over the place, and now I'm better. And when he said that, got a new back. Brent, you ought to see him carrying 150 pounds of oranges on his back with his new back. Oh, God. Now, I don't want to overstate my welcome or nothing, but I come here for a reason. I wanted to tell you about the dead being raised. I wanted to tell you about the demons being cast out of people. And I want, that's one family. And that's only three miracles. So, this is what we're going to do. Necesito que junten las cosas y vayan orando por todo, ¿eh? ¿Está bien? Cristo, todo para mí, suya, su sangre carmesí, nada, nada debo yo, porque mi Jesús, Él sí lo pagó. Jesus, Jesus is for me. With his blood, he bought for me. Nada, nothing, nothing I owe because Jesus set me free. Mm. Now, this is how it's going to go. Y'all going to stand up because y'all been sitting a long time. She's going to put on some kind of thing y'all like to hear, some kind of tune that y'all like. And then I'm going to get to my job finally. The reason I'm here, it's fire. It's healing, it's health, it's life, it's peace, it's joy, it's restoration, it's deliverance. It's, it's Holy Ghost and fire. Fuego. Fuego, <laughs> Fuego de Dios. So this is how it's going to go. Y'all pray like you know how. It don't matter to me how. Ain't going to change a thing on how it goes. I'm telling you, when you get to see what I've seen, 